For some time now, there's been only two major players in the digital space, and that's DJI and HD Zero. Well, that's until now, because Cadex has just released their new Walksnail digital FPV system. But what if you can't afford those new fancy goggles, or maybe you have a pair of pretty decent analog goggles stored away? Well, you're in luck, because Cadex has also released their new VRX for the Walksnail system. So let's take a look at these and see if it's worth the hype. So here it is, the Walksnail VRX, and this little device makes it this much easier to get into their ecosystem. Now this VRX features all the specifications as their standalone goggles, whether it be the Fat Shark Dominator or the standalone Walksnail goggles. The only thing missing from this is a screen or a monitor, and that's where you're saving some money. Now current pricing for the VRX is around $220, but Cadex does conduct multiple discounts throughout the year. As you can see, mine is paired with a VTX and a micro camera. And because of that, this VRX did retail for around $100. So there are some deals to be found depending on when you buy this. I'll be talking more about this VTX and micro camera a little bit later in another video. So let's open this up and see what's inside. And here it is, nothing on the box, a picture of the VRX module in here. On the back here, you just have the Walksnail logo and a QR code to get to their website. All right, so first you're greeted here with a quick start guide here. Pretty cool, tells you about all the buttons and how to set this up. We have some cables here. It looks like a distribution cable here or a Y cable, so you can power up both your VRX as well as your goggles. All right, next you have a mini HDMI cable, so you can go from your actual VRX to your goggles. Finally, you have a Allen wrench and a bolt. I suspect this is being used to mount your VRX to your goggles. Next, you have these two antennas on here. They're pretty hard to get out. Let's put this right here. They're kind of noisy. But as you can see, these are RPSMA connectors, which is actually similar to the ones on the DJI goggles. Last but not least, we have the actual VRX right here. Let's try to get this out. Wow, this thing, I was gonna say, uh, it's just kind of weighty here. It has some weight to it. Also, you have some, looks like double side tape on here. So this is another way or method you can mount your VRX to your goggles. Okay, so let's take a closer look at this Walksnail VRX. And I said earlier, this thing feels pretty good. It looks premium. Obviously this thing here is plastic and that saves on weight as well as the cost as well. Now, the first thing that jumps out at me are these two Walksnail logos on here. And these are your two directional or patch style antennas. Now, my understanding is you can open this up and change this if you want to, if you want to upgrade them. It is connected via a UFL connector. Besides that, you have two additional antenna connection points right here, and these, as I said earlier, are RP SMA connection points. And they did include some antennas here for them, which is pretty cool because some other manufacturers don't include antennas with their VRX or with their goggles. So we're just gonna screw this on here, and hopefully these things perform very, very well. If not, we can change them. We have multiple antennas that we can put on here, and that vibration or rattling that I heard earlier has not gone away. So that's a really, I guess, reassuring sign here. Besides that, you have this little hole here for a fan, a cooling fan, which is good to cool down this equipment in here. On the bottom here, you have the mini HDMI port, and we'll be using this to connect to our goggles. Okay, so while we're on top of it, we have a few buttons or interfaces on this VRX. The first one here is a back button to go back through the menu. You also have a record button right here. It looks like a play button as well, I guess. So if you're a DVR, and then you also have a five directional joystick on here. Pretty, pretty darn good. Now on the side here, you have two holes. You have an SD card slot and also a barrel jack here for your DC input. Now this card slot here does support 250 gigs and this will be used for recording your DVR to your memory card. Now besides that, you have the DC plug right here, the barrel jack, and you have the supply cable right here. We'll talk about that a little bit later as we set this VRX up. Besides that, there's nothing else on here. This thing looks pretty simple. Now on top of it, you have the mounting solution to mount this to your traditional analog goggles, whether it be fat truck or some other manufacturer. For me, I won't be using this today. I'll be using a different method to mount this to my goggles. Now this VRX is compatible with a lot of goggles on the market. As long as your goggles support an HDMI in, then you should be good. We do have this HDMI output right here. And as long as your goggles have that feature, this thing will be compatible. Heck, if you don't even own some goggles, as long as you have a monitor that has HDMI in, this thing will also work. So this will be a valuable tool for some time into the future. 
Now the goggle of choice for today's install will be the HD Zero goggle. This is a pretty premium goggle that has a lot of features in here. This can be used as a analog goggles and HD Zero goggles and today it'll be used as a walk snail goggles. Now as I said before you do have these mounting points on here and this will fit most goggles. The top part or mounting point on the HD Zero goggle is a little bit different and it is intended to be right here in the front of it but since this is a little bit different and larger than your traditional fat shark goggles I'll be using a different method. Now this is my first time doing this, so hopefully this method here is going to work and it's gonna be a convenient yet a clean install. Now the way I'm gonna to decide to do this is by using a 3D printed part. Now, if you go on Thingiverse, you can look up multiple you know, prints or options to mount your VRX on multiple goggles. This one here seems to be the best option for me at this time, although I haven't even tried it out. But the whole intent here is to mount this in the front of your goggles, right here. This will go on top, and you can still keep your patch antennas for your HD Zero goggles in conjunction to having this on here. Some of the other mounts require you to remove these patch antennas completely, and I really don't want that. I wanna have a simple setup where I can use with multiple drones. Uh, just pack this up and I can fly. So that's the option I'm gonna use today. Hopefully it does work. Now this is a, two part mount and one part is gonna be on the actual goggles while the other part is gonna stay on the VRX. I'll leave links to this option down below so if you wanna put this on your HD Zero goggles, then you have that option. All right, so it's as easy as slipping this down. I'm gonna keep the orientation correct. And it's pretty cool because it's gonna work in conjunction with this patch antenna on here. Slide this down just a little bit, boom. Wow, that's a really good fit. And then let's see if I can, wow, that's pretty cool. Then this second part here just does the same thing. Slide this over a little bit. All right, not too bad guys, looks okay, at least for now. And all I have to do is just slip this in here. I think that's gonna work. This is gonna be a pretty nice mount, guys. Uh, it, this looks like some good quality, uh, tape here. Oh, well, at least it looks that way. All right. All right, let's apply this as best as we can. All right. There it is. That's your mount. Wow. Look at that. Check that out. Holy cow. All right. So now I can still fly, have my patch on here, and I can fly. Well, it might be obstructing the antennas a little bit, but I can still have it on here and not have to unscrew and move all this SMA stuff here on the side. I can maintain both of them. And when I'm ready to just pack it up, just remove this, slide this off. Okay, now that we have our VRX mounted to our goggles, it looks pretty cool. It's not the sleekest, but it is, in my opinion, is perfect for my situation because I can just slide this off and remove it. So now that we have it mounted to the goggles, let's connect this to the actual goggles here. And we did it with these mini HDMI cable that was supplied here. Now I'm not gonna use this one right here, although it's pretty cool. It's just a little bit long and kind of cumbersome, especially for this short distance on here. And I wanna keep this as clean and tidy as possible. That's the whole goal. So I did opt to buy the one for the HD Zero VRX. The only thing is that these things are hard to come by. Uh, my local store didn't have these, so I had to order this straight from HD Zero. And it did take a while, a few months to get here. Um, that's why I'm only reviewing this right now. So it's as simple as just removing these covers on here, just plugging one into the other. So I'm trying to see which is the most convenient for me so that it looks the neatest. HDMI in. Wow, there it is. There's the setup. Look how much cleaner that cable looks opposed to what was gonna happen if I <laughs> used the other supplied cable. So this looks really neat. So we have our power cable here. There's a Y or a splitter in here and one goes to your goggles, the other goes to the VRX. And conveniently as well, it's also on the same side as the goggles. So it's almost like this VRX was made for this HD Zero goggles. Now I wish there was a 90 degree bend on here. That'd be awesome. So I'll have you look into that. That's it guys, this thing is ready to rock and roll. I'm using an 854S battery. Now this VRX supports between two and five S. Some websites say six S, but there's been a lot of reports of guys actually damaging their VRX by going with a six S power source. And the problem is a lot of guys sometimes will possibly overcharge their batteries and that does damage 
to the VRX. So I'm gonna stick with a 4S and this gives me good results. But now that I have two devices on here, this might consume a lot more power. So we'll see how the battery life is on this. Maybe I have to upgrade this to a larger battery, which shouldn't be a problem. Okay, so we have our power cables both in our VRX and our goggles. Only one thing left to do is to plug this in and see how it looks. But let's go to the computer so I can record what I see on the screen and we can take a look at it. So we're here at the computer. We have our VRX right here. Time to plug it in. Now my screen recorder here isn't recording. I don't know why. Um, so we gotta improvise a little bit. But anyways, let's just plug this in and see how this thing here works. All right, so you can hear the fan immediately. This thing is kind of loud actually. It's gonna be a pretty loud experience if you're gonna use this fan in conjunction with the fan in the goggles. Anyways, so there it is powered up right now on the screen. And as you can see, you have your GPSR, your voltage, your 17.1 volts for the actual voltage of the battery going to the goggles. Then you have your bit rate and then your delay and then actually the distance. So let's go to the menu and see how this whole thing here works. So you go left and right, the joystick, the five-way joystick works pretty well. You hear that little beep in there. And you can go to settings and then choose these settings on here. Obviously I don't have my VTX connected to the uh, drone and to the, and to the VRX right here. So you're gonna see some uh, non-highlighted items on here like transmit power, frame rates. These are all things you would get if you had a camera and the VTX connected as well as all these other uh, options here. The big thing to see here is the transmit power. Uh, also the resolution, standby mode, bit rate as well. You can change all those things if you had this thing connected. So anyways, let's go back up here and go to the display. Take a look at that menu. And then you have zoom out, zoom in, your custom OSD. For right now, all I have is the brightness and the viewfinder option on here. Then if I go to the right here, we have record settings. Click on that. And then you have the VTX record 1080p 60 is the default and record loop both, both in the SD card as well as the SD card in your VRX. And then device, click on that. And then you have the buzzer. That's the little beep that you're hearing right now. You can change the volume on that if you want to, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, And then you can hear it a little bit louder. And the instructions is pretty cool. It gives you a picture, the same picture you see here on this card that we talked about earlier on the unboxing. And it gives you a good picture of all the buttons and what they do. So this looks all good guys. So this is a pretty nice VRX. It is pretty loud, you can hear that thing. That fan is loud. And I have the actual HD Zero goggles off. I can put them on as well. I'm gonna put that on. Let's see if we can hear a combination of the fans. There you go. That's just a little warm up. This thing is still cool, so it's not as loud, but this kind of is just as loud, maybe louder. All right, so let's go back to the table here and I'll give you my final thoughts. Okay, we're back at the table here and the Walksnow VRX did a pretty good job. This thing is very clear, very vibrant. And guys, if you own a analog goggles or any kind of goggles with the HDMI in, this is a pretty good way to get into the Walksnow ecosystem. Very affordable, very cheap. And yeah, it's one more option in the digital world. So only one thing left to do and that's to install our VTX and our camera into our drone. And I have the perfect drone right here for that. So if you're interested in that video, hit that subscribe button there for you to be notified whenever I do this build right here. Should be a pretty fun and interesting build with this walk snail system. So I'll leave links to all these products down below, including these HD Zero goggles, if you wanna look at those even further. So thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.